Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. There's a lot you can do with potatoes. Forget the basics though. What can you do to serve up the perfect mashed potatoes every time? You may not immediately imagine mayo as the perfect addition to your mashed potatoes, but it adds a delicious creaminess that might really surprise you. Mayo is quite the kitchen multi-tool in fact, but the condiment shines best when pulling together the various ingredients in a recipe. Delicious in many different types of salad, it also adds moisture and flavor. When using mayo in your mashed potatoes, add a tablespoon at a time and stir between each addition. You'll notice the texture changing as the emulsifying aspect of mayo does its job. As a special bonus, you'll also enjoy more flavorful, interesting mashed potatoes with a bit of sweetness that balances those savory notes. It's also worth taking note of the potatoes you use. Different types of potatoes change the flavor and consistency of mashed potatoes, and mixing a variety of potatoes has a similar effect. So to make excellent mashed potatoes, you might want to try a combination of different varieties. The best mashed potatoes will use a mixture of starchy, waxy, and all-purpose potatoes. Starchy potatoes are often a great choice because they create a fluffy potato mash and have easily peelable skin. Waxy potatoes do nicely when baked, and all purpose potatoes have a nice balance of everything you'd want in the perfect potato. Paired together, the potatoes perform different jobs and create a mix that'll work just right for your mashed potatoes. Like baking soda, baking powder acts as a raising agent. While baking soda needs an acid like lemon juice, buttermilk, or yogurt in the recipe to work, baking powder is baking soda and an acidic ingredient already mixed together, meaning it's ready to be used in your mashed potatoes. Typically, this ingredient goes in baked goods like cakes, cookies, and breads. However, it can also help take your mashed potatoes to the next level. While you're adding your milk, butter, and any other ingredients, simply add a pinch of baking powder. The result will be a dish of perfectly fluffy mashed potatoes. You just, here's what you do. Uh -huh. You just fold it in. Okay, I don't know how to fold broken cheese like that. And I don't know how to be any clearer. While there are many methods of making mashed potatoes, some are a little more unique than others. Palm aligo, for example, involves a whole lot of cheese, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. Palm aligo is a French dish that translates to roughly cheesy potato dish. Begin by cooking your mashed potatoes as you usually would, then drain and mash them with a ricer or food mill. After adding them back to your warm pot, stir in your finishing touches – butter, cream, and of course, cheese. You'll want to keep stirring that cheesy, delicious goodness until it seems to pull like mozzarella. Finish off to your liking with salt and pepper. Colcannon is a traditional Irish dish that mixes mashed potatoes with cabbage. However, you can replace the cabbage with other leafy greens. This addition is not only delicious, but also offers a way to get some more healthy veggies into your diet. For a spin on the classic Colcannon dish, consider kale. This leafy green is a nutritious, delicious, and aesthetically pleasing choice for your mashed potatoes. First, prepare your mashed potatoes as you usually would. Then, saute kale with green onions in a separate pan. Add the greens once your potatoes are mashed up and stir well. If you want, you can up the creaminess of this dish and use full cream. Typical mashed potatoes use butter as one of the primary ingredients. However, there's a good chance you're not using as much as you should be. Chef Joël Robuchon's mashed potato recipe is best remembered for this reason. This decadent, creamy dish has a seemingly ludicrous amount of butter, but one spoonful of these potatoes will have you convinced that it's the way to go. To recreate Chef Robuchon's buttery mashed potatoes, add one half pound of butter for each pound of potatoes. This ratio will deliver potatoes that are so creamy and delicious that you won't even need gravy to complement them. At the chef's restaurant, this dish is called puree de pomme, and in your house, they'll become the new favorite mashed potato recipe. Caramelizing onions is a great way of taking a strong, pungent vegetable and turning them into soft and sweet delicacies. These onions are a delightful stir-in for mashed potatoes, too, because they add just a little of that sweetness to your savory mash. Onion God! Thank you for these onions. Be wary, however, when caramelizing your onions. Too many cooks do not take the time they should, causing the onions to get too hot and burn. To caramelize onions properly, they'll need to go through color stages. First, they'll become translucent, which should take about 10 minutes. Then, they'll become a dark walnut color, which can take up to 40 minutes. Whatever you do, don't rush the process. A little patience will make all the difference for your finished mashed potatoes. 
Almost everyone will agree that garlic improves nearly any dish, and that goes doubly for mashed potatoes. Even better, roasted garlic has an entirely different texture and flavor profile than sautéed or raw garlic. To roast your garlic, take a whole garlic bulb, cut off the top, drizzle olive oil over it, wrap it in foil, and roast it in the oven. Avoid a common mistake when roasting garlic. The temperature shouldn't be too hot, so set your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and let your garlic bulb roast for at least 45 minutes. You'll know the garlic is ready to go when you can squeeze the cloves and the garlic comes out in a paste similar in texture to that of toothpaste. Stir this roasted garlic right into your mashed potatoes to give your dish some extra zing. Browned butter is deliciously fragrant butter that's cooked until it has a brown hue. And the best part is that it's incredibly versatile. You can include it in nearly anything that could use an extra kick. If you're considering giving brown butter a try in your mashed potatoes, you can save a step or two and microwave it. To do this, cut your butter into smaller pieces and pop them in the microwave for 10 minutes. Be sure to check on your butter every few minutes or so. When you smell that nutty aroma and see that brownish color, you'll have successfully browned your butter. When you whip up a plate of mashed potatoes, simply use the brown butter in place of your ordinary butter or drizzle it on top of the final dish for something extra special. The scent of nutmeg probably brings pies and pumpkin spice flavors to mind, but this warm spice can also add incredible flavor to your mashed potatoes. My belly's wanting something to find me down a pumpkin in every gobble gobble way. While mixing in your other ingredients like butter and milk, simply throw in a pinch of nutmeg. You'll add some spice and warmth that will no doubt bring a welcome boost to your already delicious meal. However, be careful not to add too much. There's no need to make those potatoes taste like pumpkin pie. Chives add a dash of beautiful green color to any dish, and as a relative to garlic, they also bring in a whole lot of flavor. Plus, chives are easy to add on top of your regular mashed potatoes recipe. First, prepare your mashed potatoes as you normally would. Then, you can use an easy trick to mince chives quickly. Begin by soaking a paper towel in water and squeezing out the extra liquid. Lay out and fold your towel twice, put your chives on the paper towel, and roll it up with an inch of chives sticking out. Then, slice the chives with a sharp knife, moving the paper towel as you go to expose more chives. You'll have perfectly sliced chives in no time. Your mashed potatoes will thank you. Mashed potatoes don't need to be just a side, of course, and there are a few great dishes you can combine with mashed potatoes to deliver a truly show-stopping meal. One great way to take your mashed potatoes to the next level is to add short ribs to your mash. The richness of the ribs will add another level of flavor that pairs well with the creaminess of the buttery mashed potatoes. To make short ribs, season ribs with salt and pepper, then dredge them in flour. Next, sear the sides of the ribs in olive oil using a Dutch oven, then add the ribs back into the Dutch oven with veggies and broth. Cook these for several hours, let them rest for several minutes, and then add the meat to your mashed potatoes. Meatballs always go well with pasta, but they also pair surprisingly well with mashed potatoes. Since there are so many meatball recipes, you can choose the best one to suit your craving. Barbecue meatballs, for example, are perfectly savory and sure to complement your delicious bed of mashed potatoes. If you'd prefer not to use gravy or sauce on top of these mashed potatoes and meatballs, be sure that you use plenty of butter so the potatoes remain moist. Swedish meatballs are another great option to put atop mashed potatoes if you're looking for something easy even more interesting. Be sure to add lingonberries on the side for a real treat. Got leftover mashed potatoes and not sure what to do with them? Fear not, you can always use them the next day. Put those mashed potatoes to work in the morning to accompany your scrambled eggs. First, reheat your leftover mashed potatoes on the stovetop, in the oven, microwave, or instant pot. Then, prepare your scrambled eggs and place them on top of your warmed mashed potatoes. The blend of eggs and buttery mashed potatoes makes for a delicious combination that may just become your new favorite breakfast. Gumbo is a Cajun dish with a whole lot going on. It's spicy and chunky and contains a host of different flavors. And while most people enjoy gumbo as a soup, it also goes great on top of your mashed potatoes. I guarantee. <laughs> oh boy. This is another excellent way to use mashed potatoes because they offer such a comforting base for gumbo. Or if you find gumbo a little spicy, the mashed potatoes should help mellow that flavor a bit. For this reason, mashed potatoes make a great accompaniment to a gumbo bar because your guests can add as much or as little mashed potato as they like. On the flip side, if you want to bring a little spice to those mashed potatoes, stir in the gumbo for a whole new meal experience. 
Butter chicken is a tomato-based curry and a favorite in many Indian restaurants. Since butter chicken is often served on top of rice, mashed potatoes make for a great savory substitute that adds a twist to this already delicious chicken dish. You can enjoy this one mixed in with your potatoes or as a topping. Butter chicken is relatively easy to prepare, too. Begin by cutting your chicken into bite-sized pieces. Then marinate it in Greek yogurt, lemon juice, turmeric, garam masala, chili powder, and cumin. Be sure your chicken marinates for at least 30 minutes, the longer is even better. Saute garlic and onions, then add tomato sauce before combining it with your marinated chicken. After the chicken cooks through, serve your butter chicken either mixed in with the potatoes or on top. There's honestly nothing better than lobster. It's great in pasta with mac and cheese and even as an excellent pairing with mashed potatoes. To make this dish, you'll want to whip up a fresh batch of mashed potatoes rather than using leftovers because the potatoes and lobster can be cooked at the same time to help meld their flavors. Begin by removing the lobster meat from the shells and then add both the shells and potatoes to boiling water. While that's coming together, saute the lobster meat with garlic and butter. Discard the lobster shells once the potatoes are all cooked. Mash your potatoes and add everything together in a big bowl. Be warned, you may never have regular mashed potatoes again.